So in this video, we're going to talk about slope and heating and cooling rates as it relates to the Certified Welding Inspector exam. Um, this is a video in collaboration with Mad Skills, which offers training to help you get that certification. And there are free practice problems at my website in collaboration with Mad Skills to help you practice everything that we're going to talk about. So um, we first need to talk about slope, and slope is a rate. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's basically it. <laughs> so um, a, a lot of times when we think about slope from a mathematical standpoint, we think of really like one quantity over another quantity, and it's usually like a change in these quantities. You might remember from your algebra days the statement rise over run. Um, so I'm going to show you like how you're going to use slope in terms of heating and cooling. Um, but first we just need to talk a little bit more about like what a slope is. So ways that you use slopes would be like 30 miles per hour. So from a mathematical standpoint, we would think of that as 30 miles per one hour. And um, so, right, that would be the interpretation, right? You drive 30 miles per every one hour of driving. Or another way would be like a job that pays $12 an hour. From a mathematical standpoint, we would view this as the slope, but you know, intuitively we know it's $12 for each hour worked. So we've got this mathematical way that we look at it, and then we have like our everyday interpretation of that. Okay, so um, slopes are related to lines, and you can determine a slope from a graph. And I wanted to show you kind of like the, the practical ways to do that. We do have to review a little bit of like graph anatomy to do this. So the big things that you need to know are kind of these two sides of the graph. So I am going to call this the, the Y axis. You could think of this as your output, your vertical axis. So this is always the, the top part of our slope. And then this other axis, X axis, or the input or the, the horizontal axis, um, you, you can use these terms interchangeably. This is always going to be the bottom part of our slope. And so when we want to calculate, it's always looking at the change in the y's over the change in the x's. And whether you, you know, remember that this is the x and y axis, not necessarily important, but it's the change in this axis versus the change in this axis. That's really the, the big thing I want to hammer on in this video. So we're going to look at just a few general lines just to kind of get used to how we do this. Um, so these are some graphs I generated from desmos.com. So the first thing you want to do is you want to select two points on the line. And what you're looking for are two points that you can easily read. So I will just show you. Okay, so this is one point. So the reason I like this is because I can easily see five is on the y axis and two is on the x axis. That's kind of the key that you're looking for. And then I choose this other point. So I can see here, this is the one on the y axis. And then if I come down to the x axis where this intersects, that would be at zero. You see that? Now you might be asking, why didn't I choose like this point here? And I could have, I'm just, you know, it, it doesn't matter which points you select. I just happen to select these two, okay? All right, so the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna calculate this change in Y over the change of X. And this is where you have to read off of your axes to do this, okay? So for the two points that I have selected, I am interested in what are those Y coordinates. So I, take that point, this point here, and I look over on the y axis. I notice that that's a five. And then I take my second point. It just so happens that my second point already is on the y axis. So these are the two points, five and one. And so this is the, the, the change or the difference that I want to calculate. So I'm going to take five minus one. That's all I have to do with that. Okay. So now we need to pivot to the x's. So now I'm going to use the x-axis to figure out the next part of this calculation. So I take this point here, and then I just come down and I read on the x-axis, that's a two. And then I had this point here, and I come down to the x-axis and I see that's a zero. Now I'd like to maintain the same order, so I, I took the, the blue point minus the green point, so I wanna um, maintain that order when I'm doing my calculation for the bottom part of this. So this is gonna be two minus zero for the second part of this calculation. And we're gonna do this a few times just to make sure that you've got it. Okay, so from here, now I just, I finished, so five minus one is four, two minus zero is two, and so then you get two, so the slope in this case is two. Okay, um, let's do that again. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select two points. So select two points. Um, I'm gonna select those end points again. I'm gonna select this point here and this other point here, okay? And so the next thing that we're gonna do then is we're gonna calculate that change in Y over the change in X. 
So remember, um, with these two points, the first thing I want to do is I want to think about this axis. Okay. So what are those Y parts of the, the of these points? We have a two from the blue point and we have a zero from the green point. So this is the change that I want to calculate. So I'm going to go ahead and just do two minus zero. And then now we've finished with this axis and now we want to come over to this axis and read those points off. So now if I switch the way that I'm looking at this, so if I take this point and just look where is it hitting on the X axis, that's at a zero and this is hitting at a four. And remember, I did the blue point minus the green point in this case. So I'm going to keep that order. So this will be zero minus four. Okay, so then I can finish this. So this becomes two over negative four. Um, so this becomes negative one half. So the like interpretation that you're going to have, the, the fact that this is negative, you don't have to get too, too hung up, up about. Um, if you were in a different algebra class, we would be more concerned with that. But from the welding perspective, you just really need the, the number and then you just interpret the number. Okay, so I've shown you this twice. So what I want you to do is you try. So pause here, give it a go, and then let's see how you did. Okay, so first things first, we got to select two points. So I selected um, those two. And so if you selected a different point, that's okay. You should have gotten the same answer. So, all right. First things first, I have to look at the y's. So taking this green point and coming over to the y-axis, that's a four, and then this one's already touching the y-axis, okay? So I'm gonna take four minus two, all right? Next, I need to reference the x-axis. So I'm gonna take this green point here, follow it down, and then this blue point here, I'm gonna follow it down to the x-axis. So you're trying to just find what are those, those x-coordinates that we're looking at. Okay, so I'm remember I'm doing the in this case I did the green point minus the blue point so I'm going to do two minus zero just to keep with that order. So here's my calculation. So this comes out to two over two, so I get one. Okay, so let's look at some actual applications now versus just these like theoretical math examples. Um, so here's here's one situation. Um, so this is the number of miles driven over the hours in the week. And so my question is, what is the miles per hour in this situation? Can you figure that out? So yes, you can, because remember, we said that miles per hour is actually just slope. So if you figure out the slope of this line, you will have determined the miles per hour. So this is another one for you to try. I want you to pause the video here, try to find the slope of this line, hit play when you're ready. You try. Okay, so first things first, I need to select two points. So I've selected those two. If you selected some other ones, um, I think these really are the best two points to select for this example because they have, those are the easiest ones to read on their axes. Okay. So first things first. So I re reference, you know, this blue one, if I come over and just read where it's hitting, this is where it's hitting on the Y axis. This is where it's hit. This green point's hitting on the Y axis. So I'm gonna take 400 minus zero. Okay. And now I need to reference the X axis and I can see that we've got zero and we're going to have 10. So 10 and zero. So again, um, okay, so we read all that off and so this becomes 400 over 10, which is just 40. And so that's going to be 40 miles per hour. And so notice, so it's miles per hour. So it's this stuff on the Y axis over the X axis. It's kind of the, the way that you can interpret those units. So let's, let's pivot to a more relevant example for, for welding. So heating and cooling rates, we actually use slope calculations for that. So here is a heating and cooling chart. <laughs> um, so this side represents the heating, this side represents the cooling. And so what you wanna do is you wanna find the slope of each one of these line segments. So we're gonna start by finding the heating rate. So you're going to do this actually. Um, so the, the points that you'd want to select, you can just select, and, and that is that is just the slope, just to be clear. So the points that you want to select, those two there. So pause the video here, try this again, you know, read off the, the graph and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so as I reference these two points, so coming over to the, the y-axis, I've got this 1200 and this 200. So those are the two things I want to calculate my change in. So 
that's going to become um, 1200 minus 200. Okay, and then um, now I want to pivot to the x-axis. So if I just read down, I have time in this case, so 6 o'clock and 2 o'clock. So I'm going to plug that in. So really what you're interested in this case is how many hours, how much time has passed. So that's the calculation that you're trying to do. So here's the calculation to get to my slope. This comes out to 1,000 divided by 4 hours. And so this comes out to 250, and I need to re read this as a rate now, Fahrenheit per hour, degrees Fahrenheit per hour. And so you can get that from, remember, you take the y-axis over the x-axis, and that's always going to be your rate when you do these calculations. Okay, so you find the cooling rate, which we know is still just a slope. So pause the video here, find the cooling rate, hit play when you're ready. So I'm going to select these two points to get to my cooling rate. And so once again, I'm going to read off of the y-axis. So I've got 1,200 and 200. So I can go ahead and calculate 1,200 minus 200. And now I need to look at the x-axis. So this is going to be 800 and 1,200, or uh, 8 o'clock and 12 o'clock. I can read time, I swear. <laughs> okay, so just maintain the order. So remember, I, I did the green point minus the blue point. So I, I want to go... 8 o'clock minus 12 o'clock. And again, you're just interested in how many hours have passed. So this comes out to the same calculation. So the, the cooling rate in this case is going to be 250 degrees Fahrenheit per hour or an hour. That that would be, it's the same same rate in this case. And so anyway, so yeah, so that is how you can use slope um, to help you with some of these graphs. And otherwise, that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, guys.